Welcome to my lecture online. So now let's have a little bit of fun. We now realize that if you live in a very strong gravitational field, time runs slower, which means that you could actually live longer if you live somewhere where the gravitational field is stronger. So let's calculate how much longer you would live. Let's say that a typical lifespan is 80 years. How much longer you would live if you would normally just live 80 years if you lived in a different location? So first, the equation. Here's the equation that calculates the time when you're in a very strong gravitational field versus the time when you're in space. So T sub naught, let's say you're on another planet, T sub naught is on the surface of the planet, T is far away from the planet where there's no gravitational influence. Again, it's the warping of space that's causing this, not the gravitational field per se. And the equation is that it's the time that you spend out in space away from a gravitational influence times the square root of 1 minus 2gm over r divided by c squared. Now it turns out the square root of 2gm over r gives you the escape velocity of the gravitational field. So 1 minus that and then divided by c squared gives you that time differential. You must be smart to figure those things out. I would have never done that. Now, take a look. We're going to look on the surface of the Earth, the Sun, a white dwarf, a neutron star, and the event horizon of a black hole. Notice, when you calculate this, you plug in all the values, and I plug in the values for the Earth, of course, the mass would change, and the radius would change as you go to a different location. But for the Earth, you can see there's a very little bit of a difference. Very small. Only one in a billion difference in the time, which means that in an 80-year span, you live two and a half seconds longer if you're on the surface of the Earth versus up in space, provided, of course, you can withstand all the other rigors of being out in space. Simply, the effect of living on the Earth is very small in terms of the additional time that you get living on the Earth, only two and a half additional seconds, because that's how much slower time runs on the Earth in an 80-year span. If you could somehow go to the surface of the sun and have, of course, protection against the heat and the turbulence of the surface of the sun, you could live for an additional one and a half hours under the gravitational influence of the sun because time runs slower on the surface of the sun relative to space by one and a half hours for an 80-year span. If you, go low, if you could go live on a white dwarf, then you could live for an additional 6.8 days relative to the 80-year span and finally, the place to go is a neutron star. Well, of course, you could live in a neutron star, but if you could, instead of 80 years, you would live 125 years because the time differential is quite significant. Time runs a whole lot slower on the surface of a neutron star relative to being out in space or on the surface of the Earth. And finally, if you want to live forever, you need to go live at the event horizon of a black hole. When you plug in all the values, the mass, the radius of, a, of the event horizon of the black hole, time will stand still. Time will not go forward. You can live forever at the event horizon. The only problem is you probably will get pulled into the black hole, but if you could somehow find a way not to get pulled in, that's the place to go, and then you have a beautiful black hole to look at. Well, wait a minute. You can't see black holes. I guess they're not beautiful. They're just black, and you can't see anything. No light comes from them. But if you could go live there, you'd live forever. At least, that's the moral of the story. <laughs> yes, the passage of time would still go on. So, you would live... Yeah, that's interesting. What would it be like? You'd still experience the passage of time. Your clock would still go forward. Or would it? Would it just stop moving? Essentially, I think it would just stop moving. So the blink of an eye would be like a billion years for anybody else not living with you at the event horizon. Well, you really don't experience it because everything takes a place. So the ultimate limit, I know. So the best way to do is to go closer and closer to the event horizon. So get very close but not quite at the event horizon where time still moves forward. So maybe one second for you is like a thousand years. Every second you pass is a thousand years for somebody else. But you only experience one second of life. Yeah. So in essence, you don't experience passage of time. You do, but at a different rate. Well, it's like saying that a fly lives with way shorter lifespan than you do. But that is their lifespan. 
That's their lifespan. So if you're very close to the event horizon, and one second on your watch is a thousand years for people on Earth, you'd only experience one second of life, while generations will come and go during that thousand years. So you don't really get an advantage in that way because you still age and move with time as time moves in that location. Can win, might as well stay here. Besides, I wouldn't want to try to live near a black hole. <laughs> yeah, can you look in the other direction and see stars? Uh, yes, you could if you're outside the red horizon. So do you, even in the, just at the inside red, red horizon, you turn around, you will see stars? Uh, that's another really good question. What would you see if you're inside? So light would be coming towards you but it wouldn't leave the event horizon. So my, so you could see stars, maybe you could see stars as you fall into the event horizon. Of course, these are all hypothetical things. <laughs> and this has nothing to do with the distance from the, from the planet. Uh, yes, obviously, if you're away from the planet, time will move at different speeds depending upon how close or how far away you're from the planet. So it's, it's not a, Sudden thing, it's a gradual change as you go closer, far away from a planet. So it does have to do with distance. Mm -hmm. Yep. R. R is part of the equation, yep. That's correct. All right. Interesting, though, isn't it?